think that the most important part is to understand that whenever there is resistance to something or someone else, that resistance comes from something in us that we haven't fully allowed, that we haven't fully accepted yet. And so sometimes saying it's just a thought or it's just a feeling is enough because that allows us to rest with those thoughts and feelings. But other times saying it's just a thought or it's just a feeling suppresses them and says, I don't need to pay attention to this. I don't need to see what this is about. So we disregard them. And it's not so much about the words, it's just a thought, it's just a feeling. It's more about what happens in you when you say these words. If it is an opening and an allowing that unfolds as a result, that's great. If it is a resistance, then these words are often not enough. And the more we say it's just a thought, the, the stronger the thoughts become and the, the more the feelings emerge in us until we just have to sit with those things. And what I found coming from a three principles and a non-duality background is that a more powerful question, at least for me, is to question the I that has a resistance. Because when you question the very self that doesn't like the thoughts, that doesn't like the reactions, that doesn't like anything in the experience, you understand that this self is not actually there. It's, a, it's an illusory separate self. So if you really question the I, if you say, who is the I that resists this? And then you, you go with the question to your very self. You will recognize you are not the thoughts. You are not the body. You are not the experience. You are the awareness within which everything appears and awareness itself is not resisting any aspect of your experience so you are actually not resisting what is happening 